And now for the Monero development segment. Not segment. as good as... I know. We like I said, we're no, working only because we haven't slowly. done it yet. No, She's good. working we're, on we're, it we're next. Because it was, it was, <laughs> you're a new segment. What? So. Are you insulting my segment? That's just mean. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was great. Thank you so Thank much. You. That was amazing. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Yeah, no. Well, it's good. You'll be blown away once the, yeah, well, once she, the real one. She does a really good yeah. job. <laughs> We're slowly releasing them. <laughs> they can't really. They take time. That's fine. But yeah, what, take it away. What's going on, man? Uh, uh, I, I, I've, I've been just yeah. This I, uh, I saw Zuko from Z, Zcash tweet something. I'm a little. Uh, ne- never meet your heroes, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess this week, I guess, unfortunately, we have I guess some um Monero foot. I would like to discuss. I guess, un- unfortunately. I I, Were you I always expect more from crypto people, but I don't. It's I'm, I'm constantly disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm particularly disappointed too. Only because it's like Laura Shin and Andy, they're like old school, quote unquote, crypto journalists, right? So it's like they exude this uh, brand of of trustworthiness and you know uh, journalism, right? Like. And there, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it was a great interview. Highly recommend listening to it. Um, Andy talks about some some amazing, you know, some amazing things from from his early days in crypto, from his early days in, in journalism, um, crypto journalism. Uh, but you know, he gets he gets to talking about the traceability. You know, he's talking a lot about the traceability of Bitcoin because that's basically what his book focuses on. But as you'll get into it, he then kind of. The, the takeaway from that video is that Monero is traceable and Zcash isn't. That's that's the overall takeaway, which I think is unfortunate because, you know, she has like a huge platform, right? So you're kind of misdirecting a lot of people. They're going to be like, oh, okay, Monero is traceable. I didn't, I didn't realize that. I thought I thought it was, uh, you know, you know, digital cash. So that that's what bothers me about that. And then I, I reached out to Andy. I tried to get him to come on the show and he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to rile up the Monero. Like, you just you just did rile up the Monero community. If you don't want to rile them up, come on the show and we'll talk about it. But don't drop these bombs and be like, "Oh, I don't want to rile them up." Like what? So I don't know, man. I'm always suspicious of people. I don't know. I don't know if there's agendas out there. I don't know if people are like Zcash bag holders. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, take it away. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just want to. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very hard. We're talking about like money, money is involved. I just want to be clear that um, I guess the reason I'm upset, I'm sure the reason Doug's upset is that this is at the end of the day, money aside, this is like cryptocurrency should be a tool. I mean, I guess if you're Monero, you believe cryptocurrency should be a tool for freedom, and everyone should use it. So it's very important how you talk about these things, right? Because the, um, history has shown us once, once, all the time. That someone thought, like people thought Bitcoin was anonymous and used it and ended up, some people ended up going in jail because it wasn't anonymous as they believed. So it's very important to, it's, it's very important to be clear when you talk about these things. So it's not just like, I'm trying to protect my bag of Monero, right? I'm trying to protect the privacy of people. So let, let, let's get into it. If you didn't see the video, I, I, I won't go over it too much. I think Doug did a great um, job of detailing it for you. Let's go over some of the, I guess, myths or mis- misinformation, I think is a better word for it, that was covered in this specific video. So they hinted at a, a big claim. There was this paper or, I guess, slide, advertising slide. I don't really know the context that it was leaked in. It was where Chain Analysis leaked a slide or someone leaked a slide from Chain Analysis, and they claimed that they could analyze, I think, like 60% of of Monero transactions and this was this was covered like happened like I want to say like 2020 and it's it gets hinted at by a lot of people on Twitter and it, it, it probably gets hinted by the person in this video. So the claim is that chain analysis can trace Monero. And the fact of the matter is that this is just like an unscientific cons- conspiracy theory because basically they make a claim no one can verify the claim no one can check the claim. They, it's not really specific. It's like someone saying, I can, I can jump 20 feet, right? And then you ask them, oh, can you show me? And they're like, no. It's like, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, that's not really, and especially in the open source math and science-based community, that's not really 
but how you should operate. There's a leaked presentation where somebody says you can jump 20 feet. So exactly, like yeah, someone leaked <laughs> it. So you know, obviously, it, 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 was, it was at a sales conference. You no, know, I was trying to get some sponsorship, but like it's irrelevant. I'm like, yeah, that's not really how any of this should work. Like, I, I, you can't really argue against a statement that, like, I can do this thing. Can you prove it? No. So it's really just conspiracy theory that maybe they can, maybe they can't. And, and they're working together with the government, with all these exchanges to keep the fact that they have this ability of secret. I mean, unverifiable conspiracy theory. So I will won't talk much more about that. And then the claim is that Monero has weaknesses. This is a claim that you will, will al also see a lot in this space, hinted at in, the, in this video. The claim that Monero is traceable de depends on how you define traceable. It's, Monero is private. It's probably more private than a Zcash in a default setting, I would say. So I don't want to get too much into that. But it, it is wrong to say Zcash is untraceable. Monero is traceable. There's no definition for traceability that fits that definition. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. you know, to be fair to Andy, I think he, he he did allude to the fact that it's probabilistic and not deterministic, if anything, uh, to the degree <laughs> to which they can garner some information. And, you know, from this information, they have mm -hmm. leads, right? Yeah. Uh, there's no deterministic traceability of Monero as far as anybody knows that would know this the most, right? And there's yeah, a that's very definitely fair true. Yeah. assessment that's taken place in the Monero community. Uh, mm -hmm. Highly recommend watching uh, what what was the video series that Justin did? Um, Breaking Monero. They go into all oh. this. They, they they review this paper and kind of debunk this this paper this uh, this old pair paper an Amer an empirical analysis of the traceability in Monero. Um, but yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Nigun. Yeah, no, that's great. That series is literally what got me into, I would say, like privacy cryptography. It is an amazing series. It's seven parts really accessible i definitely recommend people watch it and i would say definitely yeah uh, in the video they, they say that monero is, has its deterministic traceability but on the other hand they say that zcash is at least in a clip that i saw zcash is untraceable which is like not not remotely true and like nuanced statement i feel that claim is not true and they, they might have some invested interest in making that claim but let's get into this paper and then the paper pretty much goes over how there is a big issue with like Monero ring signatures. And like Doug said, the paper, if anyone cites this paper to you and, and as, as evidence that Monero is traceable, the paper was actually released. And by the time it was released, most of the findings in it weren't actually relevant because Monero had actually got a draft of that paper and actually patched the issues presented in that paper. So this, this is an old paper. Oh yeah, this is an old paper. So don't let anyone like FUD Monero for you by citing this paper. It's a really well-written paper, well-researched paper. And a lot of the attacks in it aren't even new. It's just a new application of them. So it's not like world ending. It's an old paper. Some of the stuff in it are still good. But if anyone's going to talk about Monero's issues, most of the issues are going to lie with its ring signatures, which is how Monero selects its certain, which is how Monero pr protects the sender's privacy, essentially. So if any issue Monero is, is going to be pointed out to you, it's going to lie in this. So I want to be people to be prepared for that. And then summary at the end of this paper basically is that you should avoid KYC exchanges as usual, right? If you're in Monero space, you should be pretty aware of that. And currently Monero is working on getting better ring signatures, which a lot of people might be aware of that Monero is increasing its ring size. I want to say it's still tentative. I've heard numbers like 128 ring members to 256 but it's not just the size increase that will make monero more private It's also how monero will pick its decoys which is also really important too and then there's currently a a, a funding going for improving monero's ring signatures against statistical attack this offset by Runkium. i don't want to get their name wrong but it is a beautiful paper they're working on protecting Monero from his ring signatures attacks. He'll, so, he'll be doing a presentation for Monerotopia, by the way. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You know, he's never, I mean, he's not, he's going to remain anonymous and he's going to do it remotely, but it's going to be the first time that he's, you know, essentially presenting. So very excited. Oh, that. that's so beautiful. Like this, yeah. like Monero's research is like literally one of the best. Cause I, I tried learning more about Zcash and, and it was, 
actually really difficult because there is no breaking Zcash. There is no like ma- zero to Zcash. There's no mastering Zcash. There's like nothing on Zcash. So that, that's an issue in itself. But conclusion is going to be um, avoid KYC as usual, right? You should ask questions and do the research yourself. Don't trust someone on Twitter, even if it's me, if it's anyone that just like said, Monero is this, or Zcash is this. You should do, you should ask them questions. And like Doug hinted at, if someone's unwilling to answer your questions, you should be highly suspicious of them. If they're unwilling to go on an interview with you, you should be highly suspicious of them. If they have no evidence for their claims, you should be highly suspicious of them. <laughs> so that's just a good overview. And to this day, Monero offers the best default privacy in the market today. So you shouldn't be worried about that. And any claims that Zcash is untraceable and Monero is traceable are just, just false, unnuanced claims. And I'm sure that our guest today, um, Rose, would, could tell Rachel could tell us all about zero knowledge proofs in their applications and things like that. But yeah, it's, it's just um, really sad to see this amount of misinformation from people who I consider to be to know better. You know, it's, it's really, really sad to see, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 no you, you touched my uh, two other things i want to point out to you mm-hmm. so, so he talked about the the leak slide and then he also pointed to um the doj i think it was the department of justice report uh for the i guess it was the what was it, the bit phoenix hack that the, the the large hack that happened where they then you know use bitcoin's traceability to basically uh, find find the hackers, uh, and you know, as part of the trail, it, le- it sh- you know it shows Bitcoin being exchanged into Monero on exchanges, mm-hmm. and so he kind of referenced that as showing Monero's traceability, <laughs> where it literally showed the opposite. It showed it leading to a dead end. Uh, so that yeah. I mean, that's just like that that, yeah. that that's concerning to me to for somebody to then you know quote that report as monero being traceable because it, he, you know you're not properly looking at the report and understanding you know essentially what's being what was being said there yeah. uh, nothing about that said that you know we could we could uh, assume that you know they figured out how to trace monero i, I yeah. At least, I, at least maybe I'm, I'm missing something there, but you know, anybody, I remember when it first came out and reviewing it and people in the Monero, there was nothing, nothing there that showed Monero's traceability. Uh, it yeah, showed- no, you're absolutely correct. I would, I would agree with you. And I would say any, like the issue that Doug pointed out in this case is like when someone swaps from Bitcoin to Monero, then swaps back into Bitcoin. And then they, and then you, people would say, oh, well, Monero's cracked. Like any, any coin. If, if you're hopping from a transparent blockchain to an opaque blockchain to a transparent blockchain, you're going to leak metadata and you're going to be traceable, right? Because what they'll do is they'll just look, oh, you deposit $13 into this and they'll wait for you to leave. Oh, you got $13 back on um, Bitcoin. So you can trace that transaction that way, right? I did, it's, you can sort of think of it like um, a club, for example. If you, if you walk into a club and the club's private, I, I don't have to track what you do in a club. I can just wait for you to to go in and wait for you to leave, but I can and I can track you that way, right? So is, is that making sense? I don't yeah, know. yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, so yeah. that, was, that was just an, another point to make. Um, and yeah, well, you know, we'll we'll leave it at that. I it would be great if Andy, you know, changes his mind and, and comes on. Chats about. I get it too. Like you know, he doesn't want. He's not. He's not. I think he he admits he's not an expert in these things. But all the more reason to be honest about it and talk about it. And talk about you know where he's coming up with these claims, the information that he's pointing to, uh, and just have an honest conversation of how he, you know. And then he he says in his tweets, "Oh, but I, but I didn't, I didn't actually say it's traceable." But if you listen to the interview, Sunil, you want to play? Actually, you want to play that part right now at the at the 50, 50 minute mark. The fifty minute mark. Yeah. Let's see if what he. Yeah. It's like 50 inch. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty rough. It's pretty rough. Yeah. Good, good, good to warn I'll, the viewers I'll out there. The whole thing, but this is kind of the most <laughs> that the investigators continued to follow that money until it was exchanged back into another form of cryptocurrency and, and cashed out. And it does seem very possible. I imagine it, like chain analysis had to have been involved in that case. It's the biggest seizure of cryptocurrency, again, of money of any kind ever. It broke the record. 
And it does seem extremely possible, I'll just say, that investigators did trace Monero in that case, too. I don't know how they did it, but that is their business, is like knowing how to trace right. cryptocurrency. Uh, I'll just say it. They traced Monero. So he concluded that they traced Monero. That that's that's the, the you know, maybe maybe he slipped up on his words there, whatever it is, but you know, that's why I wanted to come on and talk about it. Uh, and the thing but, is you know, that, that's a very large audience to be telling that, you know, you've concluded that Monero is traceable and that you think chain analysis has a way of tracing it. And yeah, the second point I want to make too is, you know, if any chain analysis, in my understanding, offers services for tracing zcash right uh you know because there's, there's data that can be gained with zcash mm -hmm. right because not all zcash transactions are essentially private by default so they mm -hmm. do offer their services that's publicly known right they've published yeah. that and it was like 2020 that they offer services for i think it was like when they announced it, it was like for dash and zcash that you know that it's a new service that they offer uh, for those that need to be compliant, you know, there's traceability services being offered for for Zcash and Dash. Uh, and to my knowledge, those services are not offered for Monero. So, so what's the what's the idea that they, like they're secretly offered offering these services and they've only announced the Zcash? <laughs> like, like that part doesn't make any sense either. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, leave it at yeah. that. I want to belabor it. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Matt. Thank yeah. you, Jim. Greatly appreciate Thank it. You so Hopefully much. he comes on. Hopefully, I hope he comes on and gives us some insights. But, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, All right. We'll see. Thank you. Thank you. All mm -hmm. right. Cheers, see you next man. week. Thank you. See you.